All right, so I'm just going to straight up, flat out, have a very weird approach to this review of The Witcher Season 2, because I could say the things you've heard people say already about this season. It's a little bit better than Season 1, it's still got some problems. I actually think the best episode was Episode 1, and from there, it was consistently just good for the rest of the full season. But the entire time, something was bothering me. I was like, there is just one ingredient, one turning of a knob, a dash, a pinch of something that would make all of this go down so much smoother and cohesive. What is it? Simultaneously, I was watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the first time. Wow, I love Buffy. I'm going to be getting a review of that to you very soon. But it all suddenly clicked. The problem with The Witcher is it's just taking itself a dash too seriously so that its camp does not go down as easy as something like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I cannot believe I'm about to say this. The Witcher needs more early 2000s. <laughs> I swear to God, I have a point. Now, let me be very clear. I did not dislike season two of The Witcher. I would say it's about half a point higher than season one. It's showing improvement and it's definitely finding a stronger voice in what it is. But as I was getting through season two, my brain kept drawing the comparisons to why certain campy elements totally work in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but absolutely weren't for me in this season two Witcher. The first and most obvious is the structure of season two of The Witcher might be its biggest opponent. The Witcher is at its best, in my humble opinion, when it's a monster of the week Geralt versus something and some smaller dashes of wider overarching season plots on the very edges. But the episodes that focused more on like the grand world World and scheme and narrative that's unfurling through the seasons of The Witcher where where it was at its weakest. And that's because instead of fully embracing like middle of the season streaks of episodes that have no real consequences, just having fun with the character setting and vibe, The Witcher insists on continuing this narrative of seriousness and weight that I just find antithetical to the setting. Because this is a setting that's rather Buffy-esque. Stop typing. I'm not saying Sunnydale is a similar setting to the continent of the Witcher. I'm saying the having a super-powered person whose main job is to hunt monsters with complex companions evolving around them is similar to Buffy. That's what I mean by setting, not the landscape. And that's why I think it would be distinct enough to not feel like a derivative ripoff and instead have like a really cool new approach to a type of story we've seen before. So what I'm proposing is instead of having this consistent through line throughout the season where the Witcher is just constantly bogged down in the larger story it's trying to tell, we do some more of the oh so sensational structure you see from Buffy, where you have your beginning resolution from the previous season as your first couple episodes, and then you dive into a whole bunch of enjoyable schlocky filler. I want to see Geralt taking down vampires and Loch Ness monsters and Bigfoots, damn it. And Siri tagging along, developing, growing up, learning lessons. And then at the end, there's going to be a few story beats just lightly touched on throughout the season that tie into the greater, you know, grand hunt you're trying to get to. And the last couple episodes just too quickly force it in and it'll be great. It'll be so much better in its schlock because the Witcher is schlocky. These people f on top of unicorns. It's not that serious of a story. So I think one of the best things the Witcher could do in terms of its longevity of a show is alter up its structure and embrace the Buffy format and take it beyond that too. I want to see more practical effect monsters too, damn it. That tree guy in episode two was awesome then the season gave me less and less cool looking monsters there was a few but not nearly enough. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper here and get into the actual like nuance of why I think this would actually help The Witcher be consumed in a much more smooth way. Because you, as the viewer, when you see a story presented in the way that The Witcher is doing, come in with expectations. There's also the weight of the way it presents itself being so serious. And that leans into the inevitable like, oh, this will be the next insert epic TV show that is mentioned in every freaking review. 
I want fantasy shows to be risky and branch out and feel different and lean into their own nature. That's actually why I think Game of Thrones really had success in its time, because it did exactly that. It leaned into the roots and nature and soul of the series, and the roots and nature and soul of The Witcher are characters that bone on top of stuffed unicorns and fight monsters in short story formats. And so I think The Witcher would actually get a legacy in its own right if it became the true version of The Witcher that it could be at its core. And that's weirdly similar to Buffy. And I know people are gonna say, but that would not allow The Witcher to be as serious as it needs to be at times, which I disagree with, because I'm not saying take on the tone of Buffy, that's a whole other operation. I'm saying structure and narrative can be a little lighter and still have a lot of those darker moments within. And also you're discounting Buffy, which has lots of dark moments. Trust me, I've been watching it and oh my God, God, there are children being talked into killing themselves. It's horrifying. Like, there's this guy. Look at this dude over here. He's Christopher Plummer looking dude. Turns out Christopher Plummer's dead. That's really sad. But he delivers a line that's so hammy where he's like, not everyone up here in the continent. And I was like, ah, that's such a great hammy line. And in the same episode, I think it's episode three, we have Siri overcoming the obstacle course and like proving this jerk face wrong. And I was like, hell yeah, Siri, you're dope. But in the same episode, it just pulls out away from all that and starts going over this like epic wide political stuff. And it worked a little more smoothly in the book, but here in the show, it's just, it's giving me a bit of whiplash and maybe they could handle it differently to deliver it better. But I think a much more easy, satisfactory way would be going the way I'm pushing. I mean, for God's sake, there's a character named Dandelion. They're not going to call him Dandelion in the show, but there's a character named Dandelion in the books and game, damn it. So as a viewer, when like some really hammy, campy, ham-fisted dialogue is shoved in my face in Buffy, it's camp. I expect it. It needs to be presented in this fashion. The Witcher is doing a lot of the same thing, which there's a part of me that's like, oh, I like this camp. But then because of the presentation, it feels like there's chocolate coated in bark. And I got to peel back the bark of self-seriousness to get to the chocolate I enjoyed. That's my season two of The Witcher review. It was good, a little better than last time around, but I wish it was more like late 90s, early 2000s. TV. That, I don't know why. That's my honest to God take here. <laughs> Wait, Blade. Blade. It should absolutely, season three of The Witcher needs to be Blade meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer presented in the style Netflix has chosen. That will be the ultimate Witcher experience. Seven out of 10 for Witcher season two. And if you take my advice, I'll be at 10 out of 10 next season. And yes, I want to see Buffy fight Geralt in an arena. I want that showdown too. point in terms of like the more narrative approach of why this doesn't work for me. Because if you have something that's campy like Buffy, 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 